MGW is and has been an important part of the Indian arts ecosystem over more than a decade now. Uh, it's really important as a node on the art calendar which we have in the country and indeed of course the city and it's an opportunity for gallerists to come together to act as a community and to really show the best side of both our programs as well as our spaces and it's a way also of thanking our collectors for being there for us over the years um, so it fulfills many purposes and obviously now that we're into our more than decade long journey with MGW. I think it really has uh, a place in the broader international uh, gallery weekend circuit also. It is an opportunity, MGW is an opportunity for collectors and artists to meet in different and more relaxed uh, scenarios. So we have not only walkthroughs at the gallery, but there are parties and events outside the galleries which allow everyone to come together as a community. So in that sense, MGW is quite a unique initiative. It's diversity of, of participating galleries and that it is free and open to all with extended hours offered by all galleries. What I find so special about it is the extensive program that is scheduled by the galleries that includes talks, for exhibition walkthroughs, meet and greets with artists, panel discussions and other events. So there's really something for everyone to enjoy. So plan your gallery hop and we'll see you this weekend. We started Mumbai Gallery Weekend I think about 11 years ago. It was um, really a sort of platform that we needed to push um, the galleries that were sort of like really having exuberant programming uh, in spaces, Bombay had changed in 2007-2008 with the whole gallery scene and lo and behold come 2008 we plummeted into a kind of um, you know bad economy with whatever happened in that time to contemporary art. Uh, don't forget that the contemporary spaces and contemporary art had taken quite a big hit in 2008-2009 and uh, Mumbai Gallery Weekend really began as a sort of collective thought and initiative that we began together. And um, it started as a small thing in Bandra that then, you know, uh, went on to becoming smaller kind of initiatives in the gallery and within the galleries uh, uh, where we are located. And, and over time, uh, Mumbai Gallery Weekend has become really an event uh, that people look forward to and it certainly does um, engage more than uh, the core art uh, going people because it kind of the, the spread of uh, this um, sort of almost celebration of art is something that uh, um, really engages you know the public at large and that public at large always translates into economy at some point or another. I always feel like the more you have in a gallery, the more it translates at some point. Hello, I'm Priyanka Raja and I'm the co-director of Experimenter. We're so excited to be part of our first NGW experience. We think that NGW is a fantastic initiative, um, mostly because of its unbelievable collective energy. The fact that 30, 40 different institutions, galleries, individuals can come together um, and work so cohesively with such great sort of collective spirit um, is fantastic and we think that this is um, a really tr truly a one of its kind initiative in the country. This year has been led by um, the gallerist Ranjana Shandruka and we think she's done a fantastic job and we think it's really this very this very idea of its collective energy is really helping the arts in general and the art economy as a result because it is not a singular force but a collective force. So we think that's really fantastic. It does support artists and collectors because both for artists and for collectors it opens out a, a much wider world because again it is not a singular organization, um, you know, uh, supporting artists or a group of artists but again it is the idea of all these multiple efforts that are bringing together um, 
visitors from all over the country, some from the different parts of the world. Mumbai Gallery Weekend is the most important event on the art calendar of Mumbai. It's a great chance uh, to see a lot of art, both modern and contemporary, over the span of a four-day weekend. It's the 11th edition of the Mumbai Gallery Weekend and it's only grown bigger and better for each successive year. The first gallery weekend that I really experienced uh, was the Berlin Gallery Weekend, uh, which was in the year 2011. And um, I remember at that time, uh, the press, the media in Berlin wrote that, you know, this is just such an amazing concept and uh, uh, you know, it's great that the galleries are having the shows in their own spaces uh, as opposed to at an art fair. And um, so, interestingly, at the same time, some of the galleries in Bombay were also thinking of the idea. And it seemed like, you know, it, that it won't uh, be possible because the art scene in Bombay uh, was so nascent. Uh, but uh, it, the seed was planted then, the same year 2011, and it's really uh, taken off and grown. Uh, so, it, you know, it started with seven or eight galleries uh, in 2011, and now uh, this year, uh, 2023, we're at uh, 32 uh, galleries. And then we have a lot of satellite events and collaborators who are reaching out to us and want to. Uh, be part of uh, the uh, weekend. Hi, I'm Tista Bhandare. I'm co-director at Young Collectors Weekend and I'm so excited to be bringing Young Collectors Weekend to Mumbai. Alongside Mumbai Gallery Weekend, this weekend, we will be showcasing at the Ice Factory in Ballard Estate. Mumbai Gallery Weekend started as a small initiative in 2012, but its significance cannot be overstated. Mumbai Gallery Weekend was started by a bunch of contemporary galleries to showcase contemporary art to a larger audience. It is one of the largest art fairs in Mumbai out, and it is one of the largest gatherings of art outside of India art fair within the country. Mumbai Gallery Weekend since its launching in 2012 has snowballed into an initiative that welcomes and promotes not just contemporary galleries but independent artists, different art venues, such as Ice Factory Ballad Estate, which seek to promote culture and a contemporary and modern art. It continues to help the art economy by highlighting often forgotten and often ignored aspects of the art market, while also spotlighting contemporary and popular um, elements of the art market. It brings into its fold just about all the elements that we have in today's art market. Uh, it continues to support artists and collectors one, of course, from the artist's perspective, it gives a different and additional platform for artists to showcase their works, voice their opinion and practices. But with collectors, it also allows them to engage with a wider range of art, whether it's modern or contemporary. Hi everyone. As you can see, we're in the middle of an install for Mumbai Gallery Weekend that starts on Thursday. This is the 11th edition of Mumbai Gallery Weekend and back when we started it with just five or six galleries in Kulava or Fort, it was quite small. Today it has 32 galleries and we stretch from Kulava to Bandra, so it really positions Mumbai as a centre for art and culture. It's very inclusive, it's very democratic and it's free for all, so please come and visit us. As far as artists and collectors are concerned, I think it really puts artists in the spotlight because if you are taking part in Mumbai Gallery Weekend, you immediately come under the attention of curators and collectors who are visiting. And for young collectors, I feel this really gives you an opportunity to interact with artists because there are so many artist-led walkthroughs throughout the uh, weekend. So please come and join them and ask questions because you don't always have access to artist studios. Mumbai Gallery Weekend is a really great opportunity for artists, organisations and audiences to all come together and celebrate one another. Um, I'm an independent curator and I'm over from the UK curating an exhibition with Squareworks Lab in a um, new artist-led project space, um, workspace, hybrid space that's opening on the fourth floor of KK Chambers. The venue looks almost identical to my old gallery in Birmingham, which is how I actually met my friends and collaborators that have now become part of Squareworks Lab the brilliant Vishwa Shroff and architect Katsusi Gotto. It's great for us to be seen alongside these larger 
commercial and critical arts organisations. It's also a really great opportunity for us to introduce new artists or the artists we work with to a wider audience. Um, we've brought four artists over from the UK and that are sitting alongside two international artists. No, nope, it's sitting alongside two Indian artists. Um, so the, the exhibition is made up of six artists, four from the UK and four from India. All of those artists are working site responsibly and looking at the venue, KK chambers that we're in. They've all taken little aspects of the space, whether it's the staircase, the windows, and we've commissioned brand new work based on those kind of assets within the building. Well, my gallery weekend has always been a special weekend for us at Hark. Um, it's very exciting to engage with audiences um, that may not come to the gallery through the year, but are always looking forward to gallery weekend. And simply because all the galleries open new shows in January, um, what ends up happening at MGW is it's a really exciting, vibrant environment. Uh, for us this year, what's going to be really special is the talk that's happening on Friday at HP. Um, and also what is really great is that usually the artist is around, so collectors and artists get to kind of interact with each other, which may not always happen. Um, in a regular exhibition or in the course of our regular programme. We're lucky enough to be having our seventh solo exhibition with Nityan Uni Krishnan, a Goa-based artist. And this exhibition is called Every Day is an Admission of Guilt and it contains both paintings as well as sculptures. And we really look forward to inviting everyone to come and enjoy the work. I'm really excited to welcome you to Ritika Pandey's first solo exhibition in India titled Birth of Forgiveness, which opens for Mumbai Gallery Weekend at Kemal Collab. This is a very special exhibition because Ritika was one of the first artists to attend our summer residency program and the works that she made during her time at residency now find their way into this exhibition as she navigates the journey of grief through her painting. We are really excited to be starting with uh, Atul Doria's exhibition. It's very, very significant for us at Kimura Festival Road that we're showing Atul in the beginning of the year. It's also marking 60, the 60 years of Kimbol um, and uh, it's kind of very special to everyone within the gallery, to Atul um, and to our sort of collective uh, uh, relationship that we begin with uh, Atul Doria's exhibition for Mumbai Gallery Weekend in January 2023. To answer the question why we decided to show Shomu Shankar versus um, Solo, a discrete exit through darkness, um, it's because it, it's a very personal project to show more and also a project very close to our heart. Uh, for those who know about um, his practice, um, one would know that he, he uses uh, the process of recreating incidents that had happened at a certain time, most of which um, have been removed from, uh, say, public memory or media archive, and there is very little access uh, to that um, history and he recreates that history in, in, in terms of recreate the scenario that, that particular, those particular incidents had happened in um, uh, to um, in a way record time and um, in this particular project um, a project very close to um, Bose's heart because in 1969 uh, Shomo's mother had been kidnapped when she was an eight or nine year old little girl and quite mysteriously returned um, in three years time and, and uh, there was literally no access to information of what may have happened to her within that time where she was taken. So Shoma was intrigued by that moment in her life and wanted to recreate um, uh, you know, that particular time by delving into um, whatever material he had, those who he could interview. And through that, he has created this fantastic body of photographs and um, something that we are very excited to share with our audiences in Bombay, the first ever feature length virtual reality film, which is non-animated. So it's really like going back into a certain time because you see it through an oculus and you really sort of experience the whole um, film through um, almost like walking inside of it. 
we are showing at Gallery Mascara a solo show by artist Steve Nkanga. And here we will see not only small format watercolor works, but also monumental works in oils and embroidery. Uh, this is a body of work that the artist has been uh, making for the last 11 months. So we are really excited to welcome everybody to Mumbai Gallery Weekend and to Gallery Mascara. And look forward to seeing everybody for this edition. And uh, yeah, best of luck to everybody. So we are showing uh, CK Rajan now what galleries typically try to have some of their uh, most important shows of the year for Mumbai Gallery Weekend. Again, like I said, because uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, visitors in town and you know, over and above the uh, audiences that normally visit the galleries. So it's a bigger platform and uh, we are showing uh, CK Rajan. This is an exhibition that has been in the pipeline for a long time and we thought it would be the right time um, on this occasion. Also, uh, Grant Watson, who's curating it, uh, has been able to fly down uh, to put the show together. And then we have two other artists in the program. From Bombay, we do have Tara Anand, Hashim Badani, Akshita Gandhi. But from other parts of the country, we have Shailesh Bihar, Sakanya Garg, Meghna Gabi Radhi, Kodanda Rao Tepala, Thamshan Gapu Maku, Koyal Raheja, Divya Singh, Tito Stanley, Virender Yadar, Digbajay Kathwa, and Lakshmi Priya Panigrahi. These artists are independent practitioners. Some of them are represented by galleries, some of them are not. Yet, we are so excited to be bringing all of them to you. Many of them are showcasing for the first time in the city. Um, and we do hope that the audiences will resonate with their practices um, and will continue to engage with them in the future. Um, as far as our exhibition is concerned, it's a two-person show. It's called Spectral Theatre and we had some curatorial inputs by Ritika Biswas. Uh, Sandeep Mukherjee is an LA-based painter and Rohini Devashar is a Delhi-based artist. At first, there seems no similarity because one comes from a tradition of painting and the other work is from the digital realm. But, you know, once you have a look at the works, you know that they're both trying to render the invisible. Uh, we have a great text commission for this exhibition as well, so please uh, read it. It will be up on our blog. And it's also given us a chance to display like institutional size and scale works in this exhibition. So hope to see you at Project Tate for Mumbai Gallery Weekend. So for us, Gallery Weekend also enables us to introduce a lot of new audiences to our shows. Um, and that's why this year is very exciting to be doing a second solo show with Apnali Mataji. Apnali's work has actually grown by leaps and bounds since the last time we showed it. Um, in the and they have also shown their work at the Dhaka Art Summit um, and at a couple of uh, shows in Switzerland where they live. So it's very exciting for us to have the show um, for Gallery Weekend and can't wait to see you all here.